Wherever you are in your life at the moment, whatever is your life circumstance, however well you're doing financially in your investments, your career, your profession, how much of it do you think you were actually in control of the outcome? Now, all of us, most of us, we might actually think that we are very much in control of our lives, that we are the masters of our fate, that everything that's transpired so far is the result of our decisions, and that we can therefore steer life like a ship towards the direction that we want. Yet, according to the renowned author and the theorist of the black swan, Nassim Nicholas Talab, I've talked about him in some of my videos, we are all deluded. He suggests that life is actually largely random and that everything is really beyond our control. And truly, it's really down to luck. Now, you might agree with that luck aspect. You might agree that it is a new news that luck plays a part in life. But no, he is suggesting that luck plays the biggest part of life, that life is truly random. And the reason why he suggests this is because if you were to look at life from the point of view of statistics and really study it, you realize that many of the outcomes in life and many of its transmutations really comes down to the dependencies of many variables coming together that are beyond our control, that we're completely unaware of. Yet in spite of this, in spite of the randomness of these variables coming together to make certain outcomes happen, we don't see the truth, and instead we fool ourselves away from the randomness of life and try to see it as being non-random, to see life as a linear path in some way we can control and direct it. And certainly when things happen, there is a lot of outcome bias and survivorship bias where we try to make sense of it causally, creating a narrative, a story of why certain things happen. To really understand this, consider the example of, let's say, a milkman. He won the lottery. He bought a lottery ticket and he finally won one day. He won a million dollars. Maybe he's been buying a lottery ticket for his entire life. Every single day he'd buy that lottery. Maybe he has a ritual where he prays, he's devout or religious or spiritual. It doesn't really matter. And then finally he wins and maybe he goes on the news and people ask him, you've won, what do you have to say? And maybe he talks about his path. He's been buying that ticket every single day and he's been praying very hard or doing certain rituals for luck and therefore he's won. And of course, when we read these things, it makes sense to us. Causally, he's been doing that every day, and the result of all his effort, this has finally happened. And this is like a nice story for us. Yet, what we don't realize is that there might be millions of other milkmen exactly like him, the same qualities, maybe even doing the same things, and they've never won. Or perhaps even we think about this milkman. It could be that after winning this lottery, he could also continue buying it and he can never win again in the future, no matter how hard he tried doing the exact same thing. And that really he won that day because of certain circumstances, that the winning ticket was just delivered to that particular kiosk that he goes to every day. And because he was just a minute early, he bought it. There were so many variables at play coming together that led him to win. In other words, his contribution of actually winning could be negligible. He could be doing the exact same things for the next 10 years and he would never win again. Yet to him and to most of us, we try to link his actions to the outcome that's actually happened without really looking at all the variables that were beyond his control and certainly beyond his awareness that have to come together to have led to the outcome of him winning. Now, of course, when I say this, you might think, well, Melvin, certainly lottery tickets are very much a game of luck. So this isn't that new. When you think about it, it really is luck, isn't it? Sure. but. What about the situation of the financial markets, if you think about it? We hear these stories of these spectacular investors and in recent times these day traders who do incredibly well. They've made millions in the span of, I don't know, a year, a week, it doesn't matter. They are incredible. And then when they get interviewed by the media, again, they look back to what they've done and they create this really persuasive and elaborate narrative of what they've done that led them to the sort of outcome that they had. But again, the sample size of us making a determination of the causality, this outcome and the actions, is really that one person. We are overlooking the fact that there are thousands of other traders and investors doing the exact same things as him, perhaps even being the same sort of skill level, yet had not achieved the same outcome. Because again, the outcome that was achieved by this trader could have been very much down to the variables of the market, which is very much down to the variables, the daily happenings of our society. Certain things have to be right in order for these outcomes to actually transpire. Yet we don't really think about that fact. We only think about the things that the person was in control of, his skill skills, his decisions, we don't think about all these other conditions that came to place to make it happen. And perhaps it very much is down to luck that had he really done nothing, the same thing would have happened because he was just lucky. And to really highlight this point, the dependencies of these variables, we can do a Monte Carlo experiment. This is a computational simulation
simulation that is usually done in computer science, but if we were to run these scenarios over a thousand times for the milkman or let's say the trader, the investor, would the same outcomes happen consistently throughout all these thousands of scenarios that we run? Would the same things happen where the variables could be very different? And I think most of us would not be confident to say yes. And that's when we start to realize that random and uncontrollable variables actually play a very big part in all the outcomes of life. And that we are just so inclined as humans to try and read patterns into things and create narratives and grand stories to link things together. Life isn't linear. It very much comes down to path dependencies of many variables. If things are in the right condition, then certain outcomes happen. And that's really it. Yet we like to believe in a very deterministic destiny that we are in control of these outcomes. We can do a thought experiment, for example, with the great Winston Churchill. Of course, we know he is a great leader. It's almost like he was destined to do great things. Yet for most historians, we would know that Winston Churchill was actually a frontline journalist at one point, at the very beginning of his career. So he was there at the war where bullets were flying past. He could have been shot fatally. Of course, he dodged the bullets, luckily, and therefore he became a great leader. But imagine if we were to run this scenario thousands of times. There could have been an instance that he was actually shot fatally and he would have died and nothing else would have transpired. His becoming of a great leader, again, many things had to fall in place for it to happen. And many of these things, like for example, not being hit by a bullet, and of course, many other things that happened later on in his life. A lot of these things are outside of his control. As much as he'd like to think, that's very much because of destiny. Again, a lot of it is really down to luck. So what we can gain from this realization that life is random? Well, the first and most important thing is to realize that past performance is not indicative of future performance. We have this tendency to try to have an outcome bias and survivorship bias where we think because the past has happened and we're trying to explain what's happened, therefore the future will be the same if we do the same things. Yet what we don't realize is that the past has happened largely because of many variables being right. Yet who is to say that these variables will be the same going forward in the future? The variables might be totally different. So in our personal lives, in our business, in our career, in our profession, in our investments, again, we don't know what the future variables would be. We could be doing the exact same things that we've done in the past. It doesn't guarantee that we would be getting the same results in the future. So it is disastrous to assume that the future would be the same as the past, to assume that life is linear. It isn't. It is completely random with many variables at play and that we would actually benefit from realizing this complexity of life. We can't try to turn certain what is actually very uncertain. At the same time, the other important point is that we can't be deluded by bias. As we try to make sense of the permutations of life, we create these grand narratives, not just us, but other people too. For example, some spectacular trader could create a grand narrative of why he's actually achieved so much success or why a certain stock or investment is going so well. There's a great narrative that we don't realize that largely it's also down to all these really chaotic and random permutations of variables coming together that led to certain outcomes. And we can easily be deluded by these narratives to assume the wrong thing, especially in the sphere of finance. Oftentimes we have charlatans doing this. We and others overplaying the contribution and the control we have to these outcomes, when in reality, the story might be much more complex than that. And perhaps at this point, you're wondering, does it mean that we should not do anything at all then? Perhaps since life is so random and beyond our control, what should we even exert effort? Well, it's really here that Taleb talks about in his book, that that certainly if we were to exert effort in our lives, let's say getting up in the morning, going to work or working really hard or trying a certain venture, we can create windows of opportunity and try to increase our probabilities of getting the outcomes that we want. But again, we have to be realistic to realize that in many endeavors, there are many variables that are beyond our control. Although we could create opportunity and increase probability, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that we can actually achieve the outcome that we want. We could, for example, do a certain thing for years and years and not get the outcome that we want, or we could even do very little and get the outcome that we want. Much of it really comes down to the endeavor and the variables that are involved. But at the same time, certain endeavors actually have more random variables than others. In other words, certain endeavors are more luck-based, yet others could be more skill-based. So for example, in the world of finance, a lot of it comes down to these variables. It is very chaotic when you view it from the point of view of statistics. And so that is an instance where randomness is really at play. You could be very skilled, yet again, variables can be conducive towards you getting what you want or totally trash you in terms of getting what you want. You could easily make $10 million, for example, in a span of a few years or 
perhaps even lose it all. But in another endeavor, for example, in the field of, let's say, medicine, if you were a doctor, in such endeavors, skill and hard work is largely a determinant. You have to be really skillful and very hardworking to be a good doctor. Sure, variables are still at play, but perhaps lesser compared to, let's say, the world of finance. And what's really interesting is that in the point of view of statistics, generally speaking, the more random a certain thing is, potentially the higher the rewards, but also potentially the more tragic the failure. In other words, in the world of finance, you could easily make a lot of money trading and investing and also lose it all. And generally, in instances where, where the variables are lesser, the rewards are lesser as well. But of course, it is safer. So you could be a doctor, you could also earn maybe millions, but it might take you many, many years. But it is a safer path. The point here is that we have to realize that all endeavors involve different degrees of variables and randomness and that the most we can do with our effort is to increase our probability and our opportunities but again it doesn't guarantee that we can get rid of these randomness and that these randomness actually play a big part in the outcomes that we want to achieve. And so with all this said you might be thinking Melvin this leads us to have a very nihilistic view of the world it's like we can't really relax because again anything can happen randomly and it's all beyond our control. Does it mean we have to be on our guard all the time? Well no. Actually, the conclusion really at Taleb in his book, actually how we should see it is we should be stoic in instances where randomness is harmful to us, but we can completely give in to luck and randomness where it is harmless. And specifically what that means is if we are engaging in endeavors where we risk to lose a lot in terms of the outcome, then certainly we have to be realistic and not be fooled by the existence of all these variables that might affect all the efforts that we exert. In other words, in other words, we have to carry it with a sort of risk management approach where we have to have contingencies for things going wrong and realizing that as much as what we do, many things are beyond our control. We can try our best to study the variables, but again, being prepared and having this critical approach is very important. So for example, if we're considering investing certain things or directing our businesses, this is certainly the view to have. But it would be tiring to see life like that. And certainly in areas like, for example, art, music, culture, or our personal enjoyment, it is okay to really give in to the randomness of it all. It is good to know that life is actually beyond your control and it is all right to relax. Because one of the beauties of life really is the fact that it might surprise you. Things often happen that you have totally not planned for. And oftentimes some of these things end up being the best things. But one thing is for sure, Life is truly quite random and we are not in control of it as much as we might like to think and we would benefit from realizing that.